Hello everyone, my name is Dionysus Kumutakos and I'm the Instrumentation and Monitoring Manager for the uh, Autoview Connection project. Uh, today's presentation has the topic of the geotechnical monitoring results, analysis and interpretation. And in particular, we're going to go through, uh, we're going to look through a few examples from the Waterview project. Just a little bit, a few words about the, the structure of this presentation. So at the beginning, to start with, uh, a few words about uh, what is the Waterview Connection project. And then we're going to move to the uh, particular examples when it comes to monitoring data. And in particular, I'll a good reserve TBM drive parameter calibration zone, the Great North Road LUT slip one, uh, land slip two, and at the end, uh, a few results from the gross the, from the cross passage uh, XP9. So, what is the Waterview Connection project? The Waterview Connection project completes the Auckland's alternative motorway, the Western Ring Route, as it is called, and will take pressure of the State Highway One through the central city and the Harbour Bridge. What of your client is the New Zealand Transport Agency and on behalf of the New Zealand Government. The project is being constructed by the WellConnect Alliance. The project includes two lane tunnels, three lane sorry, tunnel with the, an internal diameter of 13.1 meters uh, and its tunnel is 2.5 kilometers long. But the tunnels are getting being the main tunnels, segmental tunnels are being constructed by the by an APB with the use of an APB TBM. They are the longest road tunnels in New Zealand and will transform both citywide and regional travel when they open in early 2017. So let's go. First of all, the Alagood calibration zone, the Alagood reserve. Located in the Alagood Reserve, the uh, TBM calibration zone was actually consisted of three settlement control arrays, three extensometers, and one vibrating Y piezometer targeting right above the tunnel uh, crown level. Uh, the setup, the reason for the setup of this calibration zone was to optimize the TBM drive parameters. And that said, it's not only to minimize effects, but or mainly optimize the TBM operation and conductivity. So the calibration and the test itself, the run itself, it consists from three stages. First run, the first section to be run in a full EPB mode. The second stage to be run in bentonite pressure regulation system. And the third part, the last section to be run with the first of the previous two perform mode to confirm the results. So this is the overall, this is the an overview of the monitor control array setup. So as you see on the top, there are the settlement, these are the SMRs, the settlement monitoring roads, uh, measuring, uh, surveyed and measuring the, the settlement on the surface. Right above the, the tunnel footpath, footprint, sorry, there's the extensor, the typical extensor arrangement that we used were steel roads, extensometers, vertical extensometers with uh, three tip its. So the bottom one was only 500 mil, as you can see, over the tunnel crown. And the other two was actually adjusted to, uh, all to aim particular formations. On the side, typically, we were using an inclinometer just to use the vertical, the horizontal, the horizontal movement, the lateral movement. But in the case of the Alagood Reserve, the, uh, would, the, we didn't use the inclinometers. So going into the results themselves, first of all, the first array, the control array, Alagood T1, which as said, it was run with full EPB. As you can see, it didn't show much, minimum effects, everything within a couple of mils and within survey accuracy over the, over the tunnel. Going to the extensometer results, as you can see right here, start having a little bit of movement right, right when the TBM arrived in the location, but then effects, as you can see, they are minimum. Even the deepest tip, which is 
represented here by the red line, it's only sold only a couple of mils and minimum to no effects when it comes to the surface. Moving to the uh, to control array number three, then again effects on the surface, minimum, everything within a couple of mils on the survey accuracy, no really effect when it comes to the tipping operation underneath. But then again moving to the extensometer, we had a little bit more movement than the one that we had before, but then again even the tip, the anchor that it was located only 500 mil above the TBM, the town crown, showed a maximum of 7 mil. And significant enough, the as we're moving higher up, the even that effect of the seven mil was significantly reduced. So on the middle anchor, we we'll get something like one mil, and almost nothing on the on the shallow one. Moving to the uh, fifth uh, array control array which was run as said before with the full EPB to confirm the results that we had from this first stage of running into the calibration zone. So then again effects on the surface, minimum to nothing, there's nothing there, there's just a couple of everything within the survey monitoring uh, accuracy. And the extensometer underneath showed a maximum of 7 mil, of 8 mil, sorry. And then again, as we're moving higher, the effects were significantly reduced. So in the middle anchor tip, we had some around an approximate two mil. And then again on the high one, almost nothing zero, which is confirms the readings that we get in the from the survey uh, settlement monitoring. So as said before, the there was a piezo as well installed. It's just right above the, the town crown to see what the effects of the pore pressure and how we're managing the uh, the EPB mode and what the effect of the EPB mode, mode application on the TBM in the surrounding environment. And as you can see, there is minimum to no effect when it comes to that. So the first run, the first stage under EPB mode, there's a little bit of effect when it comes to the bottom tip, but as we go move higher, there's nothing this minimum effect. Little to no difference when, move, when we moved into the bentonite system. And then again, going back to the EPB mode on the last stage, the third and final stage, nothing, nothing significant there. Everything within what it was uh, expected. So moving to the Great North Road uh, overview. There's a great that's that's uh, the Great North Road was one of the most critical sections that we we're going to run through, and that is mainly due to the uh, to the minimum coverage as we're moving higher with the with the tunnel alignment, in order to get out to the northern approach trends. So from this point on, we're moving into a coverage to a diameter and we're getting shallower and shallower as we're approaching the, the exit to the north uh, northern approach trends. As you can see in the area, there are a few of the of uh, historical landslips, which are mainly working in incrementals, seasonal affected by the uh, rainfalls and really slow movement. And they've been working there for years and years. So the one, the first one that we're going to go through is this area right here, which is as called the landslip one. So a closer view. So the landslip one overall was the scarp on the surface was was like that, and that was the tunnel one drive that were the drive one that we're going underneath. So the this slip is located in another uh, well instrumented uh, area. So in the area there was an inclinometer, the TVR, TVI 007, a piezometer further away, and an extensometer on the top. So this is a cross section of the area. As you can see on the drive one, which is this one, the first drive that we're going underneath that uh, particular area, the, the slip surface itself is moving Closer to the closer to the tunnel, 
So we have a minimum of approximately five meters. The tunnel crown is approximately five meters underneath the slip surface. So the reason for that, so what a bit of a history when it comes to that. So prior to the arrival of the TBM, an approximate, with the approximate distance of 50 meters from the slip area, TVI04, which you can see the readings here, showed a movement of approximate 5 mil over a two month period. An additional 5 mils when it comes over the, over the next four days. So as a result of that, the TBM production was seized and the situation evaluated by the construction, design and geotechnical teams. So the risk, as we all understand, was that the TBM excavation methodology could trigger the landslip. Landslide surface, as mentioned before, was only five, more or less five meters above the tunnel crown. Further movement of the slip could cause damage to the tunnel lining. lining. Significant further movement of slip could cause damage to the adjacent infrastructure. As you notice, we are right next to a, uh, one of the significant roads in the area. So they might cause uh, damages to the road and the services. So what it was done was there was a done there was a, an evaluation. So full evaluation carried out, and that was that included detailed anal analysis of the groundwater data and the rainfall uh, rainfall data, analysis of the TBM operating parameters, analysis of load cases on the permanent works to ensure stability uh, suitability of the structures, and obviously review monitoring regime to ensure uh, suitability and accuracy of the system. So the evaluation's outcomes was that that particular slip movement was due to the heavy rainfall and the TBM operation parameters were adjusted in order not to increase the pore pressure levels. So moving forward as we approach further and as we're going under the slip and this is where we have the first effect of the TBM so you can see the slip here the additional five mils the initial five mils over a long period and the additional five mils over the four days period and as we're moving underneath minimum to no effect of the top and then you can see the effect of the TBM right here as we're going underneath it and the situation remained as such as we we're moving away, past and away from that area. So further down the line, then again, confirmed readings, no additional movement on the surface, and the effect, the initial effect of the TBM further down, captured by the inclinometer, remained on the initial level. There's no continuation when it comes to movement and effect of the TBM. So the interesting part, as, as mentioned before, there was an extensometer in the area as well. And the, so as you can see, this is exactly where the TBM, when we, the TBM went underneath that extensometer. And as you can see past that line, there's minimum to no effect. There, bear in mind that these extensometers have uh, vibrating wire transducers, so they're quite sensitive. So without wobbling that fluctuation, it might be to reasons like temperature and stuff like that. And as you can see, the orders of magnitude are quite small. So the fluctuation is within within a couple of mils, really. But interesting enough, right before, during the variation period, obviously, as you've noticed already, right here on this level, there is a split in the deflection lines uh, of the three anchors. Just a reminder that the red one, the red line, the uh, number one anchor is the deepest one right above the tongue crown the yellow one is the one in the in the middle higher up and the silo one is the green so what what caused that split here and that differential behavior of the anchors and the answer has already been given really so as you can see this is the arrangement at the depth of the uh, extension anchors. So the deep one was right here at the level, the middle one was here, and the solid one was here. And you can see here, this is the movement of the historical slip. So as we were moving, as the slip was activated, the movement was obviously like that. 
that sold that appears to be that anchor number two and number one move the other way and as a result of that we have a actually the slip was dragging the surface of the instrument of the uh, instrument sorry and I'm going to three leaving stable and anchor down uh, anchor number one and number two that has as a result that that exactly what had as a result to appear that uh, number tip number one and number two appear to moving further down and being extended when uh, the top one number three appear more or less stable obviously uh, following that this extensometer was uh, permanently was redundant and was destroyed as we all know vertical extensometers are not designed to measure lateral movement so that drag that the extensometer the instrument experienced uh, it was the last thing that recorded more or less so moving to the so-called land slip 3 in the same area further moving to the north the land slip 3 this is another historical slip in the area this is closer to the to the road to great north road and this and and as you can see the scarp here so the toes the choice was made to in order to monitor more closely the behavior of that slip we installed an inclinometer and a piezometer the interesting enough that those two instruments were installed in the same hole so the piezometers were vibrating wire piezometers and they were actually attached to the uh, inclinometer uh, slope indicator tube the two tips of the piezometer were designed for the deep one to target uh, exactly the sear, the slip surface in order to monitor the pore pressure in that particular sensitive surface. So as you see, there's a cross section of the of the area on the, of the slab, uh, land slip three, sorry. So as we're moving, then again, tunnel drive, tunnel one drive, so this is moving fairly close that's the slab this is more or less what was the, the slip surface and moving forward this is what the inclinometer gave us so there is a little bit of movement more or less four to five mils as we're moving underneath with the tbm a little bit further movement approximately four or five mil uh, additional movement and this is exactly going past that this is exactly where the deflection levels stayed so there is no significant movement as the tbm after this point the tbm move underneath the uh, the slip area and the long term one again just staying in the same levels so interesting enough that's the what's the piezometer this is a graph of the piezometer installed uh, in the this particular location and this is a graph uh, showing the the levels of the groundwater and the behavior and actually plotted against the rainfall as the said the rainfall was quite it's quite significant when it comes to the behavior of these of these historical slips in the area so as the TM cut ahead was 32 meters away we start seeing the first effects minimum effects really as the TBM cut ahead was adjusting to the piezo and then we have a combination of the rainfall as you can see here quite significant rainfall levels and the tbm operation we have a maximum the peak right here as the tbm was uh, 20 meter past the, the location and then again a drop down as we move away and as the cut ahead was 30 meters away we have a 0.3 bar increase in the face pressure again which is affected the piezometer reading so we'll have another spike right here and after that as we're moving away the the readings and the pore pressure became uh, returned back to the to the previous levels so the adjustment of that the, uh, the evaluation on that it was that we had more or less what the critical pore pressure is of the movement because that was when, when, when we had the maximum movement uh, captured by the uh, inclinometer right here so that was more or less the critical pore pressure level when it comes to that particular slip surface 
and that was critical as we had to come back in this particular area during the uh, Tunnel 2 drive which was that obviously had the, uh, the advantage that were further away from the surface or on the Tunnel 2 were more or less mm. 20 feet, 25 meters away but then again, again it was used to adjust the uh, TBM drive parameters into what was appropriate to minimize the effect so moving further down and that's the final section is the uh, monitoring of the cross passage and in particular we're going to go through uh, cross passage number nine so this is the arrangement right here as you can see so this is the still segments highlighted here and right here in the middle is the still segment opening and is the, the entrance of the of the cross passage so when it comes to survey monitoring there were two and there were used three control arrays consisting from these points here so that's the first array on the uh, left hand side the middle array consisting of these points and the right hand side array consisting of these points so we have point survey monitoring here monitoring the effects around the uh, uh, still segment opening and obviously these points here to assess the effects on the on the main tunnel and these are the control this is the controls and the graphs that they were used to the controller that they were used so as you can see that's the right hand that's the left hand side sorry this is the arrangement of the middle control array and this is the arrangement of the right hand array so these are the lines that they were represented in the graphs in order to assess and check the effects on the the effects on the main tunnel uh, during the construction of the cross passage so these are the results this is the result of the mid section which was obviously have the maximum effect and the bottom two are the uh, the right, left hand side and the right hand side control arrays so as you can see there isn't uh, there's no significant movement everything within within five mil and way below what it was expected by design but interesting enough you can easily pick up that there's a there's a split in the readings in two groups so the yellow line here representing the far away line actually remains more or less stable when these the other two control arrays they have a slight increase which is quite which was quite uh, strange because if you when it comes to the uh, when it comes to convergence somebody would expect that all lines they're gonna gonna move uh, further up or f sorry further down showing the showing the reducing the distances or even in the case of the squatting would we'll have these two rays getting a little bit uh, shorter showing negative values and this array getting a little bit uh, longer and showing uh, positive values but instant, instant enough in our case there's that split and the reason for that is that as we have here these control arrays in a close-up and you can see as mentioned just a reminder that this array here the blue one and the green one so then increase in the distance so that a little bit of a positive values when these one remain more or less stable and the reason for that is that as we opening removing the uh, the panels from the uh, steel segments you know to get to the cross passage what actually happened is actually there is a movement just like this and this when it comes to the uh, monitoring readings appear to like this point number three point moving out and down so that's exactly the reason why these array here and this array here showed positive values when this array were remained uh, unaffected really so these are the same survey point survey point prisms but showing in the right around the uh, uh, still uh, still segment opening but now analyzed there were 3d survey, mon survey monitoring points so these are the two graphs analyzing the same data 
but in a horizontal and a vertical sense around the opening, measuring the uh, behavior of the opening. So as you can see here on the horizontal, more or less the five mil that they were captured in the slight, slight movement there. And when it comes to vertical, negative, nothing really, no significant movement, everything under five mil, just a couple of mils there. So moving uh, beyond the, the survey monitoring that we had on the, uh, on the around the uh, steel segment cross passage opening, the opening was actually equipped with the strain gauges around the uh, on the steel segments, in order to capture all the deformation of the steel segment and behavior during the, the opening and during and further down during the construction of the cross passage, uh, the excavation of the cross passage behind it. So we have two pairs at this location. There's one in the lintel on the top. There's sorry, two pairs in the little here, and of the same manner, two pairs of extensometers on the two dubs, left hand side and right hand side dub. And on the side, you can see around the arrangement, the detail arrangement and installation of the instrument on the of the extensometer of the uh, strain gauges. Sorry in order to uh, fully capture the deformation of the steel segments. So the readings when it comes to those, uh, as you can see, obviously on the, I didn't mention, but obviously that particular uh, cross passage, there were props used in order to support the, the steel segments and the rings that they already built on the, on the main tunnel during the, the removal of the, of the panels. So as you can see here on the dubs, Right here is the preload of the props captured. As you can see here, right here, this is the left-hand side job. And these are the props. Uh, needless to say that the props, that the props themselves that were uh, equipped with strain gauges. This is a graph that I actually, in order to, uh, to uh, monitor the, the behavior of the, of the props, uh, mainly during the, uh, during the preload, phase and during the uh, the initial uh, panel removal uh, panel removal from movement from the uh, ring and actually just the, there to measure the performance of the props and you can see minimum to no effect when it comes to the to the lintel when it comes to cross passage and then again and you can see here right clear this is the readings from the uh, of the first prop. The bending moments and it remains stable. Uh, to be the these lines, the horizontal lines, that's going through the graphs in details. Uh, the green line was actually these are the triggers are trickle levels effectively, but the green line mainly representing the what was uh, what was anticipated. Uh, by design. So during the phase, during the top head excavation, as you can see, that more or less were spot on when it comes to the deformation on exactly what was what it was designed and what it was expected by design. So moving during the moving to the uh, second stage, the inverted excavation. Interesting enough, there's no additional movement. Uh, don't mind these spikes here, as these uh, strain gauges, they were uh, vibrating wire strain, uh, strain gauges as well. And these uh, has to be highlighted that these the vibrating wire uh, instruments are quite sensitive when it comes to the uh, to power sources, power cables running through. So that's, that's effectively noise from power cables running by the construction team uh, during the during the works, interesting enough to uh, to note here is that the is the as we excavating the invert, there's a transform, there's a move of the loads and reduced re redistribution of the of the loads around the opening. So we we'll see a slight release, which is captured right here. Reduce of the of the loads when it comes to the jobs. It was captured on the left job and on the right job as well a minimum to no effect when it comes to the behavior of the lintel. And then again, slightly, slight increase, but way before, way above the, uh, any trigger levels 
when it comes to the when it comes to the loads received by the by the props. So interesting enough that the redistribution, as as expected, of the loads around the uh, the sli around the uh, segment, the steel segment opening, uh, were captured by the instruments in a quite good way, really. So moving into the cross passes now, this is more or less the this is the uh, the design arrangement when it comes to survey monitoring, the convergence survey monitoring. So on top we have the uh, uh, the SMRs, the settlement monitoring roads, measuring any effects on the on the surface. But on top of the cross passes, there is an extensor in the same way that it was used for the uh, main tunnel, the two main tunnels. So then again, this one, the bottom tip, anchor, is aiming uh, one meter above the, the crown of the cross passage, and the other two are higher up, uh, targeting uh, uh, materials and this behavior of the deformation as we go higher. In the same way, right next to the cross passage, there is the, we use the inclinometers in order to measure any horizontal uh, movement during the excavation of the of the cross passes, and you can see here what was mentioned before, the props that were used during the the removal of the panels of the uh, steel segments. So then again, this is the, these are the control arrays used for the monitoring of the converges uh, converges survey, and the control arrays. And then again, these are the graphs representing the movement that we have. So on this particular cross passage, we used uh, two control arrays. On the first one, as you can see, as expected, there's a little bit of movement. We have a maximum of approximately 12 mil, more or less, captured by this line here. And 9 to 10 mil when it comes to this line here, which, as, which is actually which is normal and was was expected, and then again, uh, more or less spot on to what was uh, expected by the uh, by design. Well, during the array two, actually the behavior was slightly was even better. So then again, we have a maximum of of eight, seven to eight mil here, captured by this array, and then again the maximum movements on the green ones. But as said. Uh, very good performance and everything. Uh, the behavior was uh, spot on, what it was expected, and nothing more than that. So, coming to the conclusions, uh, some things to take under consideration when it comes to monitoring regimes. Critical parameters. Its project presents a unique set of critical parameters, as its project project is different. These parameters must be identified. Identified and then select the appropriate instruments to measure them. Ground conditions, the practically determine the source of the monitoring instrumentation, type of instruments, monitoring frequencies, and so on and so forth. Complementary parameters are in other measurements. It's always useful to measure a number of parameters as in as many different ways as possible and to look for correlation and patterns between the measurements. Instrument performance, Critical things to have uh, in mind, range, range, resolution, IQC, and most important, precision and repeatability. Cost-effectiveness, as in everything, the difference in cost between a high-quality instrument and a lesser-quality instrument in generally is significant when compared to the total cost of installing and monitoring an instrument. So I hope that was interesting and thank you very much for your attention